yeah, working with photographs. We use photographs a lot. Um, the first option is uh, you reuse your own products. So you photograph your products and use them as posters. Second option is you use private photographs. That could be your personal photographs from your holiday trips or pictures that you took from friends. Of course you need their consent uh, that you use their, their photographs, but um, you can do beautiful things with it, like book covers or posters. And sometimes I also use pictures of myself. So I already was in newspapers, I was a döner seller <laughs> and also a US military general, I think. A good way to get a lot of good pictures is to ask uh, crew members um, for a photo shoot like we did on Speed Racer. So we invited crew members uh, for a one or two day shooting with a pro professional photographer. Um, they could pick props, they could pick uh, costumes and we photographed them and we created advertisement, like fantasy as advertisement using uh, their faces. That was a good fun. Uh, that puts everybody uh, in a good mood, you know, you have to create a good spirit for the film, this is a good way. Here you see crew members as famous race car drivers from the past. For a German film we had to create uh, a tabloid magazine, a Russian tabloid magazine. Um, and the production company uh, had a premiere um, during the time of pre-production and we invited extras for a red carpet event and we had an extra photographer who was uh, taking pictures of the extras on the red carpet. And we used these pictures inside the magazine. These ladies uh, were actors in the film Cloud Atlas. They were waitresses in the famous restaurant Papa Song. And uh, yeah, they were playing in the scene. Everything was on, or the background was green, green screen. And I had to design advertisement. The idea was to use their images for advertisement for the background. These are examples of hero props. So we needed to take pictures of the actors. Like this one that was made for Passion by Brian De Palma. And this lady had a part um, in the film Before Vendetta, Valerie Page. This is an example of a German actor for a German film, German comedy. So highly professionally photographed with uh, our own product. And this book cover was created for the ghostwriter. And it was also a poster and a poster reused on the movie poster. And this is a little side story from the film The Ghostwriter. Uh, one of the main props, uh, very important for the story, was this photograph. Uh, a photograph taken in the 1970s where uh, the audience has to recognize that the two main characters know each other from the past. Um, and creating this photograph was uh, a huge task. So we started with photographing a couple of extras that didn't look really British. So the environment had, had to be Cambridge or Oxford in the 1970s or so. Um, and we used, I had to use uh, private photographs of Piers Brosnan and Tom Wilkinson. And you see how difficult it was you know, in Photoshop to get it all together so it looks believable. Another way of getting good photographs is of course buying photographs. Like this hero photograph that we needed for a film. Uh, it's owned by Corbus or now by Getty images. Um, and these images you can buy. But there's also other websites where you can buy stock photographs like ThinkStock or Fotolia. Um, and this is actually a pretty good way. They, they have offers where you can download 25 uh, photographs per day. Like these photographs that are used for background, photo, uh, background posters. And just by adding a logo, 
uh, or a bit of, bit of text. I uh, made concert posters or fashion advertisement, tobacco advertisement, uh, 80s like. Here we needed a big banner, a political banner showing uh, a Chechenian president. And it's an image that I found on ThinkStock. And uh, this is a boxing club used in the film uh, A Most Wanted Man. The location is a, is a famous boxing club in Hamburg and it's all covered with original boxing posters. The smell is fantastic in that room, but we were not allowed to show any of the posters because they were showing real boxes and real events. Um, also photographs of real people that were in this boxing club as you know, spectators. Uh, so I had to recreate the look of, the, of that room using ThinkStock photos. Um, and I don't know how many poses I made, maybe 120 or so. A lot, a lot. On the film The Monuments Man, we had to recreate a lot of artworks. Uh, famous artworks like Rembrandt's or Da Vinci's and many images I found on the website of a company called Bridgman. Um, they had the Rembrandt's and the Da Vinci's we were looking for. Small size sometimes, like in this image, uh, or big size, like the Last Supper that we had to create in, in full size, original size on a, on a big wall. And was actually printed on a poster, like a poster, and put up as a wallpaper onto the wall. And uh, we had painters that were painting over it, and the look at the end was just perfect. The main artwork in the film is the Ghent altarpiece. Uh, it's very famous in the art world. Uh, it was stolen by the Nazis from Belgium, uh, and we had to create, recreate. The, the altarpiece. Of course we couldn't uh, borrow it or find it somewhere else, so we were looking for a good image that we could uh, reproduce. Uh, we got an offer of the Ghent church for a price that was way too high, but we were able to find uh, another company that was also selling the same image, low res, but with a lot of Photoshop and with the skills of our painters, uh, we were able to recreate uh, the altarpiece. And I had a look at the, at the original after the film and I have to say I was <laughs> looked much better than the original. <laughs>